salam, muy, and welcome back, my fellow language teachers, to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. And in this video, we're talking about how to make your classroom maximally accessible to each of your individual learners without the dreaded teacher burnout. Along the way, I'll be sharing key things that every teacher should know, including how you can use choice, flexibility, and something called universal design. For those of you who may not know me yet, I'm Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango. I have my PhD in linguistics and a true passion for language learning, both as a student and as a teacher. Well, thanks for joining me on this journey today. In our last video, we unpacked the notion that accessibility is an issue that is relevant to students of all learning backgrounds and dispositions, not just students with documented disabilities. In this video, we're diving deeper into accessibility by exploring some fun and engaging ways to integrate classroom modifications to your everyday class flow to help you reach every learner while staying grounded as a teacher yourself. Well, bando ali chanche, let's get to it. Okay, the anti-burnout recipe is simple. You need to leverage multiple points of entry. I mean, let's be honest, individual learner differences can vary wildly, and it can sometimes feel like a lot. For instance, you might have two students who need a distraction-free testing environment for a particular test coming up, so you have to remember to schedule a separate room for them. Another student might need the option to take the test digitally, so you have to have the test available digitally and as a hard copy. Another student might have realized he just forgot his glasses for class that day, so you have to figure out how you can get him to access what you're writing on the board. It's a lot to manage, so where do you start and how do you stay grounded? While scheduling logistics and improvising work is unavoidable, a lot of what it means to have an accessible classroom actually can be preemptively solved by having planned flexibility. And by that, I mean multiple points of entry. Okay, but what do I mean by multiple points of entry? It means providing your learners with multiple ways to access, explore, and practice the learning content. Just in the way that there's no one essay prompt that's gonna resonate equally across all of your students. There's no one lesson, activity, assessment type that's going to be optimally accessible for all of your students. And fun fact, the principle of multiple points of entry comes from a pedagogical framework known as UDL, or Universal Design for Learning. And that framework was originated in the field of architecture. It was only later applied to education. So how can you leverage this idea of multiple points of entry in your classroom? Well, as it relates to language learning, this can mean varying the kinds of tasks and assignments and activities that you plan for your students. You can do this by rotating between activities that are geared towards different kinds of learners. So you might have activities geared towards your visual learners. A gallery walk project would be great for that. Your auditory learners. A transcribe the lyrics of this song challenge would be great for that. And your kinesthetic learners perhaps a vocab scavenger hunt. Now, another way of providing multiple points of entry can be to provide students with options for how they can complete a given assignment. So, for example, instead of assigning an essay and requiring that it be submitted in written form, you can offer the option of submitting an audio essay, also known as a podcast essay. Now, an added benefit to using multiple points of entry in your classroom is that students get exposed to different ways of learning, different ways of studying, and that can help them find the best way to get the content to stick for them. Student-driven learning like this can help learners advocate for themselves more effectively in the classroom. For example, if a student isn't able to catch novel vocab words in spontaneous speech, they might not know why they're perpetually confused in class. But if they have the chance to discover, hey, my brain learns vocab words better when I can see them as opposed to only hearing them, then they might take the driver's seat and ask the teacher, hey, can you write out the word so that I can see it? And on that note, remind students that they don't need to have a label disorder or a documented disability in order to speak up on a learning struggle that they're experiencing. In fact, inviting accommodations for learners of all backgrounds can make the space feel more inclusive. For more ideas on how to integrate student-driven learning into your classroom, check out the video that we've linked for you in the description. Now, the coolest part of all of this is that in most cases, accessible teaching generally leads to better learning experiences for all of the students in a classroom. For instance, if a student with a documented disability requires that new vocabulary be presented both in writing and auditorily, that might help five other students in the class who also benefit from that dual encoding, even if it's not a documented learning accommodation for them. 
The truth is, all learners have individual differences when it comes to optimal learning strategies. So everyone ends up better off when there are options, choice, and flexibility. For example, using technology-based applications of the learning material can make the content more accessible to learners of diverse needs. Speaking of which, if your students don't already use the Mango Languages app, then encourage them to use it as a supplement to the class. One great thing about the Mango Languages app is that it's ADA compliant, and that means that among other things, it maintains adequate color contrast, it works with screen readers like Apple VoiceOver and Android TalkBack, and makes use of alt tags. To learn more about the Mango app, check out our white paper, which we've linked for you in the description. It outlines how the app's unique features offer an innovative entry point for learners of diverse needs. Well, my fellow language teachers, that's all for this time on Adventures in Language. If you want to make sure that you're up to date on all of the awesome language teacher content that we have for you, then come join the Mango fam by subscribing to the channel. And hey, tell your friends about us. As always, if you have a question or an idea for a video that you'd like to see from us, let us know in the comments below. We're always listening. Psst. Want to know what languages were used in today's video? Then check out the notes in the description. Well, hey hey, and I look forward to seeing you here next time. Bye! I'm back, and I'm here to remind you to get your free language teacher goodies, which you can access through the link in the description. In next week's video, we're diving into how teachers can build students' intuition about target language grammar. If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, then ring that notification bell. In the meantime, catch up on our existing videos, which you can access through the links on the screen. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.